For East Palestine residents John and Lisa Hamner, life as they knew it came to a screeching, flaming halt at 8.55 p.m. on February 3rd. It was that day that a toxin-laden train derailed just meters from their successful garbage truck business, which they had grown from five customers to more than seven, zero, 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 over an 18-year period in and around this close-knit Ohio town. It's totally wrecked our life, he told the BBC, choking back tears in the parking lot of his business, where the stench of chemicals and sulfur from the derailment remains powerful. I'm at the point now where I want out of here, he added. We're going to relocate. We can't do it no more. After the derailment, emergency crews performed a controlled release of vinyl chloride from five railcars that were at risk of exploding. Mr. Hamner's eyes are red and swollen, which he credits to the lingering physical impact of the chemicals spilled in East Palestine. But he and his wife tell the BBC that their main wounds are unseen and psychological. I'm losing so much sleep. I've already been to the doctor twice, and I'm taking anxiety pills, he said. This is ten times worse than just losing my livelihood. We built this business. Like her husband, Mrs. Hamner said she spent sleepless nights worrying about their business, their ten employees, and the town where she spent twenty years of her life. Already, several dozen of their long-standing customers have canceled their collection services and said they plan to leave East Palestine. I'm afraid for the people that live here, she says. I don't know anybody who can sleep because it's on so many fronts. It's your business, it's your health, and it's the health of your friends. Standing on a mound of dirt within sight of the charred remains of several railway cars from the derailment, Mr. Hamner likened the incident to Chernobyl, an April 1986 nuclear accident in then-Soviet Ukraine. He's not alone. Over the course of two days in East Palestine, several residents told the BBC that they consider the derailment a seminal moment in the town's history. At least for the foreseeable future, their lives will be measured by what happened before the February 3rd disaster and what took place after. Federal and local officials have advised residents to drink bottled water. The authorities said it was safe for people to return to the town a couple days after the derailment, though environmental experts have voiced skepticism. Sufficient exposure to the chemicals released in the crash, which include vinyl chloride and butyl acrylate, can result in symptoms from nausea to cancer. For this town, this is a Pearl Harbor or a 9-11. One of those things that people always talk about, said coffee shop owner Ben Ratner. In Mr. Ratner's case, he said the stress and trauma has manifested itself in an interesting mix of emotions and sensations. He now visibly bristles at the once routine sound of trains passing by, adding that they seem louder and more abrasive than they had in the past. He described friends in East Palestine as easily panicked now and constantly on alert, feelings that he compared to post-traumatic stress. We need to start looking at the emotional and psychological long-term impact, he said. People are concerned when they hear trains, or when they think of their kids going outside, or letting their dog outside and having it accidentally drink contaminated water. It's serious. Mr. Ratner added that local children, after years of COVID-19 disruptions, now have to contend with another traumatic event appending their lives. This thing could go on for generations, he said. It's a lot more than gases and the big cloud and plume of chemicals. The chemicals released in the crash and the fire can have serious impacts on health, a professor of environmental health at Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore, Keeve Natchman, told the BBC. What's really missing is information about how people come into contact with these chemicals in the air, drinking water, or through soil. Lingering mistrust. 